Welcome back to the ultimate guide for the Fluval Aqua Sky 2. We've covered the basics, we've covered auto mode, now it's time to get advanced with pro mode. This is Bentley, and uh, today we're going to finish out the ultimate guide for the Aqua Sky covering my pro mode settings, along with a couple of neat tricks you can do in some special situations that are a little more advanced settings to really take advantage of the Aqua Sky, although those do apply to the plant. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what matters here inside of pro mode. First thing you'll need to do is get whatever device you have your Fluval Smart App on, Go to your light, select it out of your device list, and then at the top, select Pro Mode. So when we look at our Pro Mode settings, right away you're going to see down toward the bottom something like six time points set or however many time points are set. It'll tell you whether or not you have a dynamic effect. You can enable dynamic effects in this as well, just like you could in Auto Mode, something that you can't do in the plant, which is kind of a nice feature. Certain people like having storm effects and things like that programmed into their light. You'll have several buttons. You'll have your export, save as, and preview just like we had before, but then you'll also have edit and overview. The first thing I want to do is if we're building a new profile or a completely new setting entirely, we're going to want to hit the edit button. That's going to bring up all your time points, your ability to add more, which is the little plus symbol down in the lower left corner. To remove time points, that's the little red trash can, then cancel and save, and you can set them along a timeline. You're going to have to drag each one with your fingertip same with you do with your, your percentages. For some people, this can be a bit of a hassle. You got fat fingers like me. It's not the, the most precise thing in the world. It's one of the downsides to, to this particular app. But other than that, you can set up to 10 points and usually a minimum of about six. So this allows us to do things like program in siestas if you like those. Uh, once you've got everything set the way you want, hit save and you'll be good to go. And then you'll have the overview button which when you bring that up allows you to see kind of a timeline of how everything goes at each time and what those light settings are set to. It's just like this screen here. It's a really easy way if you're ever sharing your settings or you're somebody like me, you wanna make sure that everybody can see your settings very easily in promo to copy them. This is how you do that. Or if you just wanna take a quick glance and instead of looking at the curve and trying to guess, you can just hit your overview and that's gonna tell you everything you need to know. To get your dynamic effects for those who care, you're just gonna tap on the time point area and you'll see enable and you can select dynamic effects and you can even program when they occur and on what days. So maybe you're trying to trigger some spawning and you know that your water changes are gonna be done on uh, Saturday, right? Okay, I do my water changes a certain day. So I do my water changes in the morning and then toward the evening, I want to have some storming effects to make corridors spawn or something like that, right? You can program that into the app directly here. And then you just toggle the enable and that will turn those on. Let's talk about my personal settings and what each of them is there for. The, the big one here is that both of these are designed to simulate a summer day. Summer is the biggest growth season for all of our plants. So if we want to have really robust plant growth, we want to mimic summer. Now keep in mind, just like auto mode, these settings are really designed for low and medium light demanding plants, and especially low demanding plants with CO2 injection. Something like the tank behind me, which is mostly cryptocurrines and java ferns, they do fantastic under these light settings. If you're looking for super high light demand plants like crypt pink flamingos, or some of your like crazy super fine leaf, uh, your rotalas and a lot of your crazier bright red plants, you're going to want to look at a different light. It just doesn't have enough power or you need several of these lights. Even in pro mode, we can only do so much. You can use the preset settings. I don't generally suggest these. Although they have been designed by somebody who's relatively knowledgeable about plants over at Fluval, there's a few problems that I, I have with the setting in general. However, if you like the idea of having a siesta, it's actually not a very bad setting to use. You might just want to make some small adjustments to the blue light depending on your personal setup. So let's talk about the setting. Here is my for 40 breeders, 29 gallons, any of your, your slightly taller tanks, somewhere between 14 
and, and 17 or so inches tall. And this is typically your distance from substrate to the bottom of the light, okay? So a 40 breeder is where I've done most of this testing, but it applies to 29s, 20 regular size tanks. Uh, and it can even apply to low light on taller tanks like your 125s. Just keep in mind that if you need some medium light demand, you're either gonna need additional lights or you're gonna wanna bump these settings up. Remember, all of my settings, just like auto mode, especially in pro mode, these are guidelines. This is a starting point. Tinker, play with it, make some small adjustments until you get everything going really, really well in your tank. Your water and your tank are slightly different than mine. So as we can assume, we'll need different nutrients and we're gonna need a little different light. Make some small adjustments. Don't be afraid to play with these, but use these as your starting point, okay? So here is my Aqua Sky Summer Day. Pretty obvious, right? Lots, it, it ramps up pretty quick. It has kind of a long tail off. We're going for a lot of overall light long term, but not necessarily a super long period of our maximum intensity light. We just got a nice kind of even parabolic curve. Where we get a lot of light throughout the day. Lots of white, lots of green, a good amount of our red, and then a little bit of blue, but not too much. Again, blue can cause a reasonable amount of boost to your algae and your plants. While they do use the blue spectrum, they don't use, they don't really need a whole lot of it. Blue encourages compact, dense growth. And what we really want to simulate that big growth period, summer, red, warm tones, yellows, oranges, and green, because green does kind of a, a halfway between blue and red. So that's why we have this focus. Green helps us get that extra compact, dense growth, but encourages that taller, more lush look right we're looking we're looking big beautiful plants that's our goal but again remember low and medium demand we're not going to put super high demanding plants under this light this is great for a 40 breeder light amount of co2 uh shallower tanks that have a lot of co2 so if you say like a 20 long and you're pushing five or six bubbles per second of co2 you can keep this setting as well but in general for your lower tech or lower energy setups and a slightly taller tank, something like a 40 breeder or a 29 gallon. This is a great setting for things like crypts, your Java ferns, your Anubias, uh, Bulbitis, some of your easier stems, stuff like that, right? This is great. Valisnarias, all that kind of stuff. This is a really good setting for those. It's not going to be too intense, so you shouldn't see too much algae. But it's just right to give them nice longer photo periods of light to kind of mimic that summer, that big growth cycle. It's a great setting. It's done phenomenal with my crypts. Now, here's the other setting for your shallower tanks. Your 10 gallons, your 20 longs, your, your 30 breeders, your 33 longs. Any of those tanks that are like 12 to 14 inches tall. Not super, super tall. This is my shallow summer. Okay? Same premise, same idea, just a little less intensity over that period of time because we don't have as tall a tank, so we don't need quite as much light. This is especially good for tanks that don't have CO2. If you're running CO2, use the normal summer day. You should be okay. But in a shallow tank with no CO2, especially if you're doing lots of Anubias or, or Crips where they really don't need a lot of light, they just like a longer period of light for the day, this is a great setting those kind of tanks. Doing some kind of shrimp tank or something like that, this is going to be A-OK -okay for getting some really nice looking plants and also making those shrimp pop a little bit. You might be like, Bentley, why don't you have like 800 different settings this time? Honestly, it's because these ones just work. You know, I, I did tons of testing on the plant in the past and I, I tried all sorts of settings and I eventually found one that really worked well. And... I found this setting, it works phenomenally. It's caused all sorts of crypt growth. It's caused all sorts of java fern growth. All my low and medium demand plants, which is what this light is just an absolute beast at being good with, they've done well. And I, I prescribe that adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And in this case, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now again, yes, I said tinker. You, you might have to increase your white just a little bit because maybe you don't have as much substrate as I do. Or maybe you have a slightly taller tank, like maybe you've got the 60 gallon, right? That tall 40 breeder, so you need just a little more light. Or maybe you're doing this on a 30 breeder instead of a 40 breeder, it's a lot quite as tall, but the shallow setting's not enough light. So we're gonna go just a little between the shallow and the summer day setting. 
don't be afraid to play with these. See how your plants are doing. See how your algae growth is. As long as you're not growing too much algae, unless, of course, you want algae, okay, you're good. But if you're seeing too much, bring the intensities down just a little bit. If it's at, you know, it's it, like the example would be, okay, if I'm seeing a little too much algae and my whites are at 75 and my pinks are at 60 and this, take everything down by 5%. Take it to 70 and 55 and that, right? Bring those down just a little bit and slowly tinker. Test it for a week or two. See how things change. Does it need to go down a little bit more? Don't be afraid to tinker. These aren't set in stone. These are guidelines. Now, let's do a really cool experiment, shall we? One of the biggest complaints that I hear about any of the Fluval Smart Controlled lights is this. What happens in a power outage? My light loses its setting. It forgets what time of day it is. My power goes out, and all of a sudden, bonk, no tank, and it never comes back on. I hate that. Well, when the Fluvols, the Fluval lights that are controlled by the app lose power for more than about 15 seconds, what happens is the memory that remembers what time it is on the light gets wiped. It forgets what time it is until it sinks back to your phone. So we can use this and trick the light with a Wi-Fi timer. Now, if you're having lots of power outages, maybe you're in an area where it's very common to get some flickers or you get like small brownouts certain times a year and you wanna be prepared for that, Wi-Fi timers are gonna be your best friend or an entire Wi-Fi power strip to control all your lights, right? That way each individual plug is its own Wi-Fi controlled thing. They're fantastic. I have some and use them and love them. We can combine these with the Fluval Smart app and get cool effects. So here it is. There's no power to this light currently. I'm going to go control my uh, my little Wi-Fi timer on the fly. So it has now lost power. We're going to wait just a little bit. We're going to simulate a, a small brownout or something like that on this particular tank. All right, it's, it's lost power. It's been a few seconds. It doesn't know what time it is anymore. Power comes back on. We turn the Wi-Fi timer on to simulate that. Our Wi-Fi timer kicks on, realizes, oh, lights are supposed to be on. Turns them on. And you'll be able to notice here shortly the lights are on. Now, this is a little slow, so I would have to probably go into uh, pro mode and like make this a little faster, or, or my auto mode. This is an auto mode setting. You can do it in both. But what happens is if we change the timing we can simulate anything we want whenever the power comes back on. So I'm gonna give you a setting right now and uh, you'll, you'll see what you like. It's coming up on the screen. I'm gonna get full power back to this thing so it looks all, all proper behind me. But in this setting, what we do is we take the sunrise to start at zero hour on a 24 hour clock. When the Fluval Smart app controlled lights get power back they lose what time it is so they assume it is zero hour if we start our lights to sunrise at that time we can have a nice slow ramp up not scare our fish set it for something like five to ten minutes real short that way it does a real quick ramp up gets back to your full power in the case of pro mode especially uh, i would say you can do some more tricky stuff but i would do this in auto this is the setting i have right here for auto mode uh, and what you're doing is you're just doing a very quick sunrise. Your day is then happening like super early in the morning, but you use your Wi-Fi timer to control when your lights come on. And then assuming that you have no power messing with your, your you know, no power outages or anything like that messing with your light timing, you then create a sunset. You see here, I've got one for two hours and then it just slowly ramps down like it would normally, but we have that fast ramp up. This is so that lights don't just come on at full blast. That can scare your fish sometimes. If we have a slow ramp up, yeah, it ramps up pretty quick, but but we can get it going fast. So let me just preview that behind me, right? You'll actually see it live. So you can see how fast this is going to go in the preview, almost immediately to full power because of how fast the preview goes. And then it sits at full power for eight hours. And then eventually, not too long here, just a second, in our preview, because it's so accelerated. Just, here's our eight hour day, assuming we don't lose power. Start to have our sunset. It goes out, nice and slow ramp down over two hours. 
and the fish aren't going to be scared. Easy peasy, right? This is super helpful. You just combine this with a Wi-Fi timer, you set your Wi-Fi timers on and off, and then you have a ramp whenever it gains power back. If you deal with a lot of power outages, this is super helpful to keep your lights correct. And yes, and a lot of people are like, well, now I gotta spend another 15 bucks on a Wi-Fi timer, Bentley. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know it sucks, but you know what? It's a good way to make sure that your lights come on and you don't lose your settings, but you still have all the power of one of these Fluval lights, whether it's the plant or the aqua sky. You just use a simple Wi-Fi timer to make sure it comes back and you adjust your settings so that it sees the start of the day at zero. And then when your power comes on from your Wi-Fi timer normally every day, maybe you want your lights to come on at 8 a.m. Well, the Wi-Fi timer knows it's 8 a.m. It clicks the power on and now the light goes, oh, I got power back. It's zero, start my program. There's your sunrise starting. Nice quick ramp up, but just gentle enough not to spook the fish too much. Easy peasy. Works perfect in a day, but if you do lose power, it's a quick reset, and when the light does come on, it's not just on or just stays off. It does come on. It has a slow, quick ramp, or rather a quick ramp up, but keeps it low and easy so don't you don't scare your fish. Nice and easy, you don't scare your fish. So there you go. Those are my settings. There's a you can do a pro you can do the same thing with pro mode, just shift all your timing, right? Just the same. Uh, there is an extra setting for uh, a siesta that you could do. It's up on the screen now, just so that you have a, a siesta program setting if you really want one. I personally don't believe in siestas. Uh, <laughs> I think I've never seen any real positive impact compared to just having my light on all the time. But for those who like them, here is a setting with a siesta. Uh, we just program it using pro mode, but we run it like it's auto mode. Pretty simple. This takes a four hour break in between its light cycles. Easy peasy. Nothing too crazy. That's it. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. Uh, enjoy my settings. Please, please, please give me your feedback. Have they worked for you? Did you have to make some adjustments? What is it? Let me know in the comments down below. All the usual stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a little like. If you got somebody who just recently got a Fluval Aqua Sky, share this video. Help them out. I love, love, love being able to help people who might have been confused in using this app or just on what the right setting is for their tank. Anytime I get that kind of feedback, I feel fantastic because I know I'm helping another fellow Aquarist out. If it's your first time seeing this, make sure you check out the first and second parts of this video. Honestly, for most people, I would say auto mode is your best friend, but if you really want to go a little extra advanced, pro mode is where you can have your fun, simulate days. You can even do multiple seasonal settings if you want and try to simulate a full year cycle of lights for your fish. and Go real crazy if you really want to. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.